No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm doing an interview I never thought I would do. I'm gonna be honest with you, I've been listening to Bone Thugs since I was like 10 years old or some shit. <laughs> never really even thought about the fact that I would one day get to meet one of the minds behind some of the most, uh, I don't know, influential stuff I was listening to as a kid. Yes, indeed. Crazy Bone in the building. How you doing? I'm good, man. How you doing? Great to have you here, man. People have been you, talking about you. Past oh, yeah. couple of days in particular. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy stories going around. Yeah, man. A lot of crazy <laughs> stories. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it okay if we sort of dive into that just to start? I do want to talk about just the overall musical legacy and everything. But right now, people are talking about you because they're like, damn, fucking sounds like a crazy person. You're just shooting the homie by accident? You cheddar <laughs> yeah. Bob the homie or what? <laughs> man, no, man. man. It was, uh, you know, it, it was, it was, um, it was some of the dark days in our past. You know, we was actually... We was actually out doing some things we wasn't supposed to be doing. Oh, it sounds like it, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, man, you know, we just um, <clears throat> we were just intoxicated. You know, whenever you got alcohol involved with firearms, you know, it it could, it could just be disastrous. You know, and that's just what it ended up being. You know, mm. it, it was it was it was uh, it was crazy, man. Wow, that is a fucking. It was a savage story, just because what you guys were out just doing robberies was this just kind of like an average uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friday night for you guys back then man, at that time. Man, what's so crazy? See, Wish actually uh, amped everything up. You know what I'm saying? Because me, lazy and busy, you, we was over Busy's father house. You know, we was eating dinner. Mm. You know, and Wish come over there drunk, talking about you know, I'm getting ready to go to. Uh, Let's go out. Let's 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 go out and get drunk because I got to go to jail tomorrow. <laughs> you mm. know what I'm saying? So we all went out. And us drinking turned into us robbing people and all kind of stuff. <laughs> man, man, you know what I'm saying? Then it just got out of hand. You know, just so happened it was a carjacking. So just what just so happened, the dude we 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 had a twelve gauge with one shell in there. Mm-hmm. And this we was doing all our dirt with a twelve gauge with one <laughs> shell, <laughs> all our dirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So when we when we got the first victim. For the van, robbed them for the van. And this is totally random? These are just people you're just seeing out yeah. and about? Yeah, You guys were yeah, totally wild. Ran, totally random. Like, <laughs> you know, we, uh, a dude was coming out, coming outside of a store or something, and, um, you know, we saw him, he jumped out the car, took his keys to his van, and, and when we got inside his van, he happened to have a box of 12 gauge shells. Uh-huh. So, you know, that just took the level up a notch, you know what I'm saying? We started, because we started loading the gun up, just busting out the window, like, dude, I was, I told everybody, I, I, I feel like uh, Tupac in the movie Juice. <laughs> Shooting out the window? Yeah. So y'all are really yes, not worried about the cops? No, not at that point. <laughs> no, well, we wasn't. So you're making uh, Ohio just sound like this completely lawless place. Was it? Were you guys just in the total, total slums where pretty much anything went down and the cops just weren't coming around? Oh, yeah, we was in the, uh, we was definitely in the hood. We was in the, uh, we, we was in several different neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying? But it was late night, too, though. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? So it was late night. And, uh, yeah, man, we was wilding that night. That was a crazy night, for real. Because a lot of places, you know, if there's one shotgun shot into the air, that's, like, reason enough for the cops to come. You guys are just riding around shooting down the air. That's pretty wild, man. Man, man but, 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 you know, um, as crazy as it sounds, when, when he got shot, I'm thankful that it stopped there because we were heading to do something else that could have went terribly wrong. Right. And we wasn't even in our right minds, you know what I'm saying? So that halted that whole situation that we were going to do. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Which is thankful because, like like I said, it could have went way worse than it did, you know? So, so thankful it didn't go that far. Wow, crazy. I'm just going to take a quick break to send a shout-out to our sponsor, Eagle Energy. They make these uh, really cool caffeine inhaler pens. Uh it's basically like, you know, the way people hit a jewel or whatever, except instead of, you know, getting the tobacco in you, you get some of that caffeine. And it's it's kind of like more efficient and a smoother way to live than drinking Red Bull or coffee or whatever. Dude, I actually have had a lot of people hit me up. Chief Keith hit me up about this. I don't oh, know wow. if we actually got it to him, but he wants one. Oh, wow. Okay. So we got these for you if you want them. Okay. Uh, people who want to check it out, the link is in the description. They can check it out at eagle.energy. And uh, use the promo code NOJUMPER22 if you want to support one of our sponsors, Eagle Energy, who's been holding down the stream. And uh, also, I just want to say, NOJUMPER.com if you want these new shirts from our New York pop-up. Mm. Um, getting back into uh, business here. So, 
I, I'm just interested in like the timeline because I, I spent a lot of my childhood like really misguided about Bone Thugs where I think I thought you guys were just from the West Coast because you just were so closely associated with that. A lot of the yeah. s- sort of similar uh, style of dress and stuff. You guys had a lot of the flannels and the braids and everything. Yeah. So I'm like a 10 year old just sort of confused yeah. about exactly where you guys were coming from. I'm interested in like timeline wise. So did you, you graduate high school? No, I didn't. Okay. But so how do you, how do you get from like, you know, your childhood years to actually being sort of like running the streets and doing stuff like what was described in that story? Like, I'm just interested in exactly how long <coughs> you were sort of in the streets living this life before the music stuff started to call you. Man, so we, we I, I probably hit the streets about 16. Mm-hmm. You know, uh. I was on the streets like doing we, we we was on the streets like doing what we was doing like about 16, 17. By the time I was seventeen, I was homeless on the streets. So, I, so I was living on the streets. <clears throat> so you didn't really have like a, a family unit that was. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. But you know the, you know the family, wasn't the unit no more. It was broken. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So what was it that broke it? Was it just like divorce, man, or was it drugs being done, or man, what was it? Man, you know the usual. Uh, Epidemic that hit in the eighties, the, mm. the the drugs, you know what I'm saying, the co- uh, the crack cocaine. So that hit both of your parents? Oh yeah, really? It hit, it hit everybody's parents in the hood that I can remember. Wow, everybody's parents, you know, and uh, um, you know, and that whole thing. So it was, it was like, you know, um, the things that we saw, <clears throat> you know, because we went from having things to like not having things due to this epidemic. You know what I'm saying? So it was like we vowed to each other to, to like, you know. Man, when we get older, we're not gonna never go down this road. We're not gonna never be like this. We're not gonna never be in poverty like this. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna do something with ourselves. But in the meantime, we was on the streets just trying to figure everything out. Wow. And so <coughs> the other Bone Thugs members though, like did y'all click up at a very early stage in terms of like the actual criminal <coughs> element? Or how did you guys sort of come together in terms of like running around doing this sort of thing? <coughs> well, man, when we when we when I first met them, I met uh, Lazy and uh, Flesh first. Mm-hmm. I was actually going to junior high school named uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and um, they were. Uh, I had a home economics class with Lazy Bone, and I had an English class with Flesh and Bone. And Lazy used to do the beatbox. Uh-huh. My other, I, I, I was in a group with another dude named K. Chill, and we used to sit in the back of the class and like rap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And when Lazy came into the class, when he got transferred into our class, he started like supplying the beats with his mouth. You know, like doing the beatbox. He was crazy with it. Like. Right. And then like I had English and Flesh, Flesh did the same thing, but I didn't know they was brothers. Mm. So I got the bright idea to have these two dudes battle each other. Wow. I was like, yo, man, you should battle this dude that's in my English class because he dope <laughs> with the beatbox. So I set the whole thing up, and then I brought him to my lunch period. And then Flesh was like, man, that's my little brother. I was like, what? And, and, and they was like, yeah, man, that's my brother. And then from ever since that point, we we we, we, we formed a group called the Band-Aid Boys, and we just started rocking in, um, rocking in school, like doing music. And it just spilled over into the streets, and we just kept hanging and just got tighter and tighter. And... The bond never broke. So basically, music was what initially created the bond, but then not being successful <laughs> immediately with the music was what basically led you guys to be running around in the streets? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that and, uh, you know, when we got to hanging around each other, <clears throat> we found that that our grandparents had already knew each other mm. and our parents knew each other. Right. You know, like, so so did, we we had been like around each other not even knowing it like for some time mm. so then um you know we just started hanging like i stayed over like lay's lay in flesh house or the, you know they would come over my house or whatnot and uh man like i said the bond just grew and as we grow like i said everybody parents went through like this some something similar similar uh with that whole epidemic right so you know um that brought us closer right that's what made us like you know we're never going to be like that. We're going to make sure we stay straight. We're going to keep our heads on straight and do this and do that. And, you know, that just brought us closer. That just made the bond. Like, And you were seeing a ton of people your age who were getting wrapped up in drugs? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Did none of you guys ever really got into it at a young age? Like, n- no, no. nobody even tried it out, really? No. Uh, man, man, the furthest we went, and it took us a long time, we used to actually think smoking marijuana was stupid. 
Really? We because because we drank. You know what I'm saying? We, so 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 we was like, why we go buy that little ass bag of weed when I go buy like five forty ounces with twenty with with twenty dollars? You know what I'm saying? Little did you know more that than you got, that back you, then. You got to put them together. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, <laughs> but 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 we used to think it was stupid. So we didn't really start smoking weed until <coughs> I started smoking weed like when I was nineteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Damn. So um. You said that you organized that that battle. To what was hip hop to you at that point? Like, were you just hearing rap on the radio? Did you have enough money that you could be going to the store and buying tapes and shit like that? Oh, like, how man. how deep had your love affair with rap music gotten at that point? Man, I was a fanatic already. Mm. I knew every artist that was out, whether it was the East Coast, West Coast, the South wasn't even popping like that. But I knew every Southern artist uh, artist that was. Bubbling from the ghetto boys to Point Blank to K Rhino, mm. you know what I'm saying? All, uh, to, from from all these people, you know what I'm saying? So I followed. I was I was a real student of hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So I knew everything. Right. Yeah. Were you uh, were you reading the source? Man, I had a source. I had Word Up. I had Yo. I had Spin. I had every Black Beat. Everything. And it's crazy too because it's like I know because I grew up in fucking New Hampshire uh, that. Growing up in an area like that, you know, Ohio, I would put in sort of a similar uh, category where it's not like a real established hip hop tradition. And mm. it's like you guys were probably like the idea of being a successful rapper out of Ohio probably stood out to you as we don't even know if this is possible. Nobody's really done this. Yeah, exactly. Man, we we um <clears throat> we always knew that when somebody heard us that that had the power mm. to do something with us that. That, that we were gonna get signed. We didn't know how long it was gonna last, mm. but we knew that once once people heard us, because people in Cleveland they was they, they used to tell us they was like, man, after they finished hearing us rapping, they'd be like, yo, y'all y'all is like broke millionaires right now. Because <laughs> as soon as somebody hear y'all, they gonna snatch y'all up. That's crazy because normally I feel like when you see an artist pop off. There's a period of time where nobody fucking believes in them, and it's so yeah. hard to sort of cross that barrier of of people believing that. It makes sense. But when you think about Bone Thugs and what you guys were bringing to the table, it really was revolutionary in a lot of senses. It was way yes. more musical and melodic than almost all rap music out at the time. Definitely. It was, Definitely. you know, it was revolutionary. <clears throat> and, and people didn't even almost have, like, the language to explain what you guys were doing at that time. And it, it almost probably seemed to you guys like, this seems amazing, but we don't even know if the world's ready for it. Yeah, man, no, no. Because, uh, I mean, we done a talent show one time in Cleveland. <laughs> One of my dudes um, named Flossie Ross, he took us to a uh, talent show. He was like, man, I'm going to take y'all to this talent show, man. Y'all y'all to kill it. Mm. And we actually went down there to the talent show, and we did, uh, we did, uh, we we started off with Mr. Wheezy. Mm. <laughs> and then we tried to rap, and they was like, we got gonged immediately. They was like, get that Oriental sound and shit out of here. We don't want to hear that. Like, 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 man, they dogged us, you know what I'm saying? We got the... We got into a fight because of it afterwards and everything. It was wild. Wow. It was wild. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So um, when did you, So, like, I mean, I guess we could even put it in context of this. You you guys, what what extents were you going to to get your music heard? Like what, what exactly were you guys doing in terms of just trying to find any way to get acknowledged? What was the path at that time? Were you playing a lot of local shows <clears throat> or trying? Yeah, man, we was doing everything. We was doing everything local. Uh, any local show, which weren't that many in Cleveland, mm. but any talent show or local show that we could find to get into, you know, we 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 hunted it down. You know, those those are the days we didn't have internet, so we had to stay with our ears glued to the radio station, mm. mainly the college stations, because that's where you find out about all the talent shows and stuff like that. You know, and as soon as we heard about them, we like signed up. Like we had to you you had to get up and physically go down to the spot and sign up. You know what I'm saying? You had to. You know, you had 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 the money to get there, you know what I'm saying? So it was like <clears throat> it was crazy. Like we 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 was doing everything and then we had met um we ran into so many people that sold us dreams in the city, you know what I'm saying? Like they was like, Yeah, yeah, we're gonna do this for you. <clears throat> right. We're gonna do that, we're gonna do this. You know, people send us to the studio with 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 fake checks. <laughs> Man, it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? So then we finally met this cat named Kerbin Henderson. Who owned a record store called Dow's Rapid Creations mm-hmm. in East Cleveland, and um, he signed us to an independent deal. 
Well, I really don't know what kind of deal it was. We never saw no money from it. So. <laughs> Some bullshit deal. Was, yeah, you know, so I don't even know if it was a deal. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we was just desperate, so we got into it. And uh, we dropped a local album right? called Faces of Death. And after after we dropped that out, well, well, before we dropped that album, it's why I went to prison. What was that for? That was for, it was all in related to shooting with, not, not shooting Wish, but they didn't, because Wish didn't, uh, Press charges, but they charged me with having the weapon. Oh, but how did they even know that you had the weapon? Because then you just bring him to the hospital. Oh yeah, but they got me though. Oh, so you you, you didn't just oh, try yeah. to like push him out and drive away? No, no, man, man, man. No, he actually when we put up to the emergency, he actually told me to get out the car and run. And 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 I was so much in shock. I was like, man, just drive to the hospital. Just go, just go. Because he was like, they gonna know you shot me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, man. So it was just like, um, we just uh. I went to jail that night for that. Wow. Went to jail for that. And the, um, it's crazy because the police officer came out when they was trying to get me to tell the true story. Right. He was like, okay, you can lie all you want to, but your friend just died. My heart dropped. I was like, oh, my God. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, these evil like, fucking yeah, pigs, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah wow. Yeah. He told me that Wish had died. You know what I'm saying? But then I was in the... Um, you believe it? I was in jail, man, yeah, <sighs> yeah. I thought it was a done deal. I was That's like, "Oh, fucking crazy!" <laughs> yeah. So, but 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 then, like two days, no, like, like a day later, I called home, and everybody was just telling me the wish was in the hospital. You know what I'm saying? They was like, "He," got, I was like, "Yo, man, they told me he died." They was like, "What?" No, he didn't die. Like he cool. They 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 can save his leg and everything. Holy so, shit! And you believed it for days because it's not like you had a yeah. cell phone to just tap in, right? Oh my god! So I was in there stressing, like, man, this is worst day of my life <laughs> for real, <laughs> for real. That is no so lie. crazy. Holy shit! So, yeah. so you, how long did you end up doing for the gun? Well, um, all together, I did eighteen months. Okay, you know what I'm saying, and um, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, like I said, he didn't press charges. They charged me with having because it was a sawed-off shotgun, which is illegal. Right. Okay. You know what I'm saying. So um, that's why, and it was my first offense, man. They didn't give me no love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I was looking for some love. Were you, you know were you sitting there in jail, mad as fuck that you were in jail, or were you sitting there like, well? At least I only got a, uh, like a year or so. Yeah, in oh, comparison yeah. to what could have happened, given what yeah. actually happened. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was thankful that that you know, I mean, I was wasn't thankful that it happened, but I was thankful that it happened to 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 the extent to where everybody can bounce back from it at some point. You mm. know what I'm saying? And come back from it. So definitely, you know, everybody lost their lives, and you know, we here now. When did the names come into play? When did you guys come <clears> up with that idea? Well, man, you know, um, <coughs> the name Bone Thugs and Harmony, and then everybody having Bone in their name. Well, first of all, you know, um, after after high school, you know, is when we really turned up in the streets. You, you know, what I'm saying we got like re re really really hot boys, and uh, and, and it's crazy because we wasn't no drug kingpins, but we 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 just. We just known to hustle. We hustle to survive day to day. But you guys were mostly robbing. You weren't like actual drug dealers. Uh, no, no, we 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 sold dope. We sold weed. Okay. And if we didn't have it, we took yours and sold yours. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's just what we used to do. But uh, right. but um, yeah, you know. Uh, so so by that time, like we on the streets hard and uh, lay 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 um lay in which they 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 hitting the block. They like scraping the block every day. They 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 um they getting fronted by some. By, by some real like mm. kingpins, you know what I'm saying? So I think Lay get knocked to, um with like with like a thousand rocks on him. I'm sitting at home watching with my parents and like watching the news and they show this dude on the news and my mother like, see I told you about hanging with them. Like, I'm, I'm like <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. It could have been you. Yeah. So wow. so after that, Lazy gets since uh he gets sent to juvenile. Cause he was like 16, 17. For a thousand rocks? Yeah. Jeez, that's that's lucky. Yeah. He gets sent to juvenile. And um, you know, uh, I ain't hear from him for a long time. And then I heard the only way he could get out was if he went to go live with his uncle mm. in Texas, in Dallas, Texas. So let Lazy went down there and lived down there for like a year or so. And I ain't hear from him like at all. So like I was still doing music, but I was still doing it with I was doing it with other people, like just like, like just making music like just randomly, and then like after a year or so, <clears throat> Lazy came back, and um, uh, 
Lay said he, him, him and his dude had something called Bone Enterprise. Uh -huh. And Lazy Bone was actually Busy Bone first. Okay. Yeah, Lazy Bone was Busy Bone. And um, he was like, we should use this name for our, for, for our little thing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, cool. I'm down with it. And um, we all have a bone name. But at the time, it was only me and Lazy Bone. Uh -huh. So I was like, cool, I'm going to be Crazy Bone. And he was like, I'm going to be Lazy Bone. And, like, it was just crazy and lazy. Right. You know, we, that, that's the whole foundation of Bone. Like, you know what I'm saying? When it first started, it was crazy and lazy. That's why our names rhyme. Let me ask this. At that time, nobody was actually saying Bone as slang for having sex either, right? No. That's interesting that that came in later. Mm -hmm. Just because it's, like, always weird to have, like, the name of a thing all of a sudden become a slang term for another yeah. thing. You yeah, know? definitely. Definitely, man. <laughs> Could open up lyrical possibilities, though. Definitely. I'm thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right. Um, so, okay, that's how, how the names all sort of came into play and everything. Yes, indeed. And then, you, you know, um, Busy, it took us a minute to, uh, uh, to, to let Busy in the group. And then um, I had to convince Lay to let the dude in. Mm. The lady, because Lay didn't want to let him in the group at first. I was like, bro, let the little nigga in the group, man. Damn, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm right. saying? Because I, I, I thought he was dope, you know what I'm saying? And um, he had been hanging around us a lot. Busy actually didn't 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 start hanging around us until till till um, high school. Okay. So we was almost about to be out of high school, drop out of high school. Right. Yeah, but yeah, he was he was the last of, he was the last member of the group to come into the group. How overall, in terms of all the years combined. How hard has it been for you guys to stay a group? Because it's, it's, when you look at the history of rap groups, there's so many amazing groups that if they had stayed together, would have been able to make absurd amounts of money. Yeah. NWA, Wu-Tang, I could sit there all yes. day. Yes. You guys have held it together better than most in terms yes. of really keeping that unity, which is weird because it's like realistically four dudes that meet when you're 16, all of a sudden yes. you're in your 30s. What the fuck do you have in common? Yeah. Not a lot. It's yeah, like definitely. it takes a real commitment to keep everybody on the same page it, man well well you know we we um we consider ourselves to be like real brothers you know what i'm saying we 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 weren't brought together everything about bone happened it it, it, it seemed like it was meant to be mm. you know like the way we met you know what i'm saying it, it, it wasn't staged it wasn't put together the way we met and everything you know what i'm saying and um we bonded together like we went through some real life struggles together on the streets where there was where there was Everybody watching me go through my family situation or me watching them go through theirs, you know what I'm saying? And and, and they were all similar. So <clears throat> we bonded and we was all we had mm. for all those years when we was grinding. We was all we had. I remember when we first came out here and Easy saw how close we were. <clears throat> we was in the studio one time. And, you know, we out here in L.A., we don't know nobody. It's just us from Cleveland. You know, all all we got is us. So when one of us would get up to go to the bathroom, the other Ford would go stand by the door. Really? Wow. Easy would be like, yo, y'all dudes is like tight for real. He was like, I wish me and my dudes would have been like that because it would have been cracking. Right. Like for real because like he 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 knew that like we was real brothers and it's still like that. Even though like like you may hear in the media that this one is arguing or this, man, that's what brothers do. That's what family do. Mm. But, you know, we vowed to never have this money situation, have us at each other's throat. We'd rather stop doing business together and still be family. Really? Because really you see so many rappers who are just straight in the dirt with their homies, and then they get famous, and six months later they, they hate each other and they can't stand each other. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like they forget about the fact that they were there for each other when they didn't have shit. That just disappears from their mind so quickly once they start having things. Yeah, man, you know what? I mean, well, you know what they say about money, you know, like money and friends, but, you know, it's just like it's never that serious. Mm. It's always about the family. You, like, I mean, we love making money, you know, and we very fortunate to have a 25-year run to where we're still in demand across the globe. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 a blessing in itself. So everybody understands, you know, like we over all the – everybody should be over all the egos and all the dumb shit you go through, like, earlier in your career, you know, because we're in our 40s now, man. You know what I'm saying? We, <clears throat> Like I said, we blessed to still be here, able to do what we do. Yeah. <clears throat> Is it – is it easier to get along now that you guys are adults, you got families, you got like a reason, you know, if you go and do a show, it's kind of like just going to a day at work, right? Hell no, it ain't. No? 
Still, and no, it's family, man. Like I said, and when you're that comfortable with people, your brother gonna always shout you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. When you're that comfortable, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna always, you're gonna always bump heads. You, uh, a person is gonna always, when you're that comfortable with people. I'm sure it's something that annoys you about each and every one of them. I've watched interviews <clears throat> with you and other members being interviewed together, and or not, not even just you, but just everybody in general, where I felt like I could read emotions on people's faces, and I could almost tell who was a little annoyed with who, who was having a bad day, who was maybe just not feeling this, who got a little annoyed when a certain member started talking too long. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking like, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it happens, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you have your days where you be like, man, would you, man, would you just shut them and let somebody else talk? <laughs> mm. yeah, you know but I saying? see it all the time with different rap groups and everything. And that's always what I'm impressed by is their ability to, you know, I, I was interviewing ICP. And I felt like I fucking felt that vibe between them a little bit. Almost like they both wanted to talk a lot. Mm-hmm. But they never let, even though I could tell that they sort of were jockeying for positions so much that they didn't let it bother them enough that it actually became a thing. And I think yeah. that's what is kind of like the, the sign that a group's going to be able to last for a long time is if they can have these little disagreements and you can just sort of brush them aside. Yeah, yeah, man, because we, we never really had no, uh, we never really had no major money disputes. You know what I'm saying? Everything was always broken down evenly right. across the table. You know, because we can't. We started this journey as brothers. We're gonna go through every single bit of it as brothers, sharing everything equally, from day one to now. Yeah. We still, no matter who rapped on this song or who didn't, everybody still gonna get the same thing. And you always just gotta like keep in mind that you guys <coughs> created something together that's bigger than any of you on your own, and that's gotta feel crazy to have like formed a brand that is bigger than the sum of a, of the parts. Yes, it is. Man, and, and that is crazy because I tell people that all the time. I'm like, one member doesn't make the group. We can, we've can we done shows, bone shows, you know, with three members in this in one city and the other two members in another city the same night, and they both sell out in different cities. Wow, really? In, 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 in different cities, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's like as long as people hear the bone music, the, the music is bigger than us. Mm. It's bigger than bone. Like, so regardless, if I'm tired of doing it, tired of going, getting on stage doing the same songs, it's in full demand. Mm. Yeah. That's crazy because there's very few rap groups that are like that. There's usually a Beyonce. Yeah. You know? Definitely. Definitely. Like, if we sit here and talk about Wu-Tang, I mean, you could name the Wu-Tang members that are world famous, and there's Wu-Tang members who really just mostly the hardcore Wu-Tang fans know them. Yeah. That's kind of crazy. That's interesting. Do you feel you're wearing the Wu Tang hat? Is that like a group that you always felt a close sort of kinship with? Yeah, man. You know, because we came in around the same right. uh, the same era. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I I really didn't like start listening to Wu Tang until like later, uh -huh. to after they came out. You know what I'm saying? But but we was cool with uh, Meth, RZA. You know what I'm saying? We was uh, the, Meth was one of the first ones we got cool with. You know what I'm saying? Then we met like Raekwon, and you know what I'm saying. That's after, that's the little drama we supposedly had back in the day. It right. was crazy. With him, what was that? I can't even remember. Man, it was uh some it was some uh Def Jam Christmas party, man, that that jumped off and it was just like a it was like crazy, man. It was just like boned against the whole East Coast that night. It was crazy. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Because, you know, we went there. I don't know, I really don't know what happened. All I know is we got to the party too early. We was young, and as soon as we got there, we started drinking, and, and we was drunk by 11 o'clock, and, you know, when we get drunk, we just start getting wild, like, for real. Right. That's basically how it happened. But, you know, like, everything everything got squashed, man. Those dudes was cool. Every, every time I see Raekwon, I'm like, yo, man, we need to uh, make some kind of collaboration happen with Bone and Wu-Tang, man. We need to oh, bring this crazy. together. Because every time we see each other, man, we mention it. Like, so we we got to make that happen for a tour or something. Have you been watching the the TV show? No, no, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, yeah, I like usually when I start watching shows, I like to let a couple episodes go past so I can like watch them back to back. You know right. what I'm saying? I, I only seen the first one, but it's really interesting because they basically like 
it's not the story of Wu-Tang. It's all these characters that are based on Wu-Tang, and then there's okay. different storylines happening. Like, the, the the beginning of it is, like, a big shooting, and then, like, like a guy shoots up somebody's house, and then he goes, and he's, like, hanging out with RZA and shit, and you're like, who is this guy that did the shooting? And then at some point, you have to realize, like, that's not a member of Wu-Tang. That's just a character in the show who's supposed to exist within the Wu-Tang oh, universe. Wow. Okay, so yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, that's kind of weird, right? Like, to think that <laughs> yeah. there could be a story about that's set in your neighborhood. You guys have characters based on you, but there's all kinds of wild shit. It's, they attempt, it's not attempting to tell the actual legitimate story. It's yeah, to it, tell it, a good story in the universe. It's kind of interesting because we did a movie like that called I Tried. Mm. You know, like like a few years ago when we were signed to Interscope and we released the Strength and Loyalty album, we did a uh, thing like that um, because we tried to shoot, we were going to shoot something in Cleveland, but what happened was, was, we decided to shoot on the coldest day ever in Cleveland. It was like a, it was like 30 below zero. The cameras was freezing, so we was like, "Yo, let's let's pack this shit up and do it in L.A. and just change the story around." So, it was supposed to be about, it was about what if we came to L.A. to meet Easy, but we never met Easy. Uh -huh. What would we be doing? Wow. And the shit was just like crazy. Like we was like. Get into all this type of shit. <laughs> that is really interesting. Yeah, like yeah. an alternate universe. But you know what's interesting about it is it's almost like. You know, now they just make superhero movies over and over. Like, we've seen, like, 15 different Batman movies that are, like, Dude. different versions of the Batman story. It's almost like, I wonder if they'll just start treating rappers like that. Where we'll have, wh why have one NWA movie when we can have a whole bunch of NWA exactly. movies, different versions of it? There's just so much content that comes out now that that wouldn't even surprise me if, if 20 years from now there's, like, four different Bone Thugs movies that have come out. Man, never know. <laughs> for real. That's weird to think about, huh? For real. How'd you feel about this fucking Japanese kid that came out all the way to America to try to meet you guys? Yo, man, this man, man. When I first heard about, cause, cause actually, Lazy had told me about this before it even hit the press. Because we got a call one day. We was on the road, and uh, one of the homies, one of the homies, a dude named Big H. He he he, he hit Lay, and he was like, "Yo, man, this is dude from uh, from Japan down here. He don't speak no English. He said he came down here to." to meet y'all and to get something by y'all. But he say dudes that robbed him, he was like, and I don't want to leave him in the hood down here because he's looking, he, he, he looking like a victim. Mm. And, and I wonder, so, who, do we know who robbed him or like what that scenario was like? Man, I don't, I don't know who it was. Could have been anybody. Could have been anybody, you know what I'm saying? So, so my dude took him in and uh, some of my other homies, I guess they went and snatched him up or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But I really thought nothing of it because it's fans that come down, like, from all over the world to that street. Uh -huh. People have sent me pictures, like, a dude from Australia sent me, like, somewhere from Europe. And, like, people have come from everywhere, like, to take pictures on that street. And I'll be taking them back. I'll be like, okay, you got your picture. Now, run for your life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Don't. Don't hang around. And I'm assuming like you don't spend a lot of time there these days. Man, man, I mean, I mean, every time I go back, that's where I go. Right. Okay. I always because that's that's everybody I know. That's where they are. So but, I always go. But there. that's when you go back. It's like you as a successful person with an actual recording career, you don't ever really have a reason to be on the block that you grew up on or exactly. whatever. But but this Japanese kid is just assuming that exactly. you haven't moved in the past exactly. thirty fucking years. Exactly. And I'm like. <laughs> That 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 was the thing that was kind of strange to me. I'm like, bro, like, I mean, I mean, I'm like, man, first, how did you even like find out how to get here to this place? Like, right. I'm like, if you go crazy. to the Sloss and Swap, me, you're not gonna see Snoop. I hate to break yeah. it to you, but that's just you know, it's, things have changed but in man, his life, man. But it's crazy because 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 somebody told me that he told them that he found our street from the little map that was on our album. Wow. I say, bro, like. I don't even know how to read that map. I don't even know what, what, what the map say. How did you do that? What the fuck? Like, no bullshit. I'm like, man, it's crazy. But, but um, certain people, like when you go to Japan, there's certain people just develop like a passion or interest in American culture to the extent mm -hmm. that it is almost just bizarre by our standards. Like, I remember yeah. being out there and seeing, like somebody pulls up on us in a, a crazy low rider that's just bumping up and down and shit. And they're like, <laughs> just like California. <clears throat> and I'm like... Yeah, not like this guy's just driving this. This is just what he drives every day. I'm like, nobody does that in California. People have collections of these cars and they bring yeah. them out for events and shit, but nobody drives around in that. People drive around in fucking Teslas and Civics and shit. That's true. That's real talk. <laughs> for real. But it's just so crazy to think that this kid had that passionate yeah. of a of a of a draw to you that he. I mean, he might be crazy. Yeah, man, I mean, uh, I mean, he, I mean, well, I I haven't 
from what I hear, you know, he doesn't even want to go home. Right. He's saying he don't want to go home. I was like, okay, well, it's going to be kind of hard to let, you know, tell ICE that when they come looking for you. But, I mean, if you got a plan, but, like, so far he got people down there, like, this happening from, from from what I hear. I haven't been to Cleveland yet, but if he still didn't want to go to Cleveland, I definitely want to meet him and sit down and just, like, I just want to hear his plan and what his plan was. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I even listen to his music. I'll I'll listen to him to see what he sounds like. You know what I'm saying? But it's worth a shot. That could be a, a good story. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, but 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 he's doing good. He's his his social media is on fire right now. Really? You know, he got over a million followers. What? From he got a, that? He got a uh he got a from what I hear, there's a label there's a record label in Japan that wants to talk to him when he gets back. If he goes back, he said he ain't going back, but you know. Imagine that that happened and his name was like, you know, Chan Bone. Or like, what, I don't know what his actual name is, but like Japanese name Bone. And then you guys just co signed. That'd be like T.I. signing Iggy Azalea. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm from the <laughs> trap, but I'm going to take this fucking insurgent Australian girl and just make her go and just talk with an, a, 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 yeah. an Atlanta accent. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Crazy. Um, Jeez. Um, man, so when we talk about. The greatest group of all time conversation. This is something that you got a little bit wrapped up in uh, earlier this year. Is that something where you felt like, is it actually really important to you that you guys are considered the best group of all time? Or is it just a respect thing where you just want people to, when they have that conversation, to give Bone the respect they deserve? What's your thinking on that? Man, it's, it's, it's like, uh, I really don't even give a damn what people think. Like, I really don't, and that's 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 really truthfully from a. It means more to to certain people than me. Yeah, it's cool when people notice notice what you do. You know what I'm saying? And like, but 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 I I know what we did for hip hop. Our fans know what we did for hip hop. I always look at. I always get my solidification from the fans. Mm. I don't look from like how many awards we got or. How many times, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, going platinum was let you know how many fans you actually had. So, you know, we did watch that a lot. But, like, once we found out that our fans was behind us and they was ride, ride or die through thick and thin, it was like I always went to them. Mm. I never went by what, you know, the the accolades you may receive because, you know, um, like I tell everybody all the time, like the best reward to me is when the fans come up to you and say, you helped them from – committing suicide or you know what I'm saying like your music helped me get through life I was going through it I was thinking about committing suicide or stuff like that you know what I'm saying like that's you're actually like our music is actually helping people like mm. in those kind of ways so that's that's that, that's the whole blessing out of it to me like who's the best everybody is supposed to think they're the best mm. if you had success like Bone Thugs and Harmony or the Migos or Public Enemy or any other group that has been successful you're supposed to think you're the best. The Migos, they're, they're in their prime. They're supposed to think, they're supposed to feel like they're the greatest mm. right now. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and I understand what Lazy is saying. You know, he feel like, you know, that stems from a whole, not just with the Migos, but just us. Like, people never mention them bone like we never existed. Mm. I'm like, they, you know, it, it, I guess it gets to him like when he, when he hear rappers talk about their favorite rapper, but they rap just like bone. Mm. But they don't say their favorite rapper is Bone. That's just the crazy part is, is that rap has been around so long that there's hugely influential groups that came before our time. Like, like for me, like I was, I started listening to rap like a couple of years after Run DMC kind of had their run. Yeah. So I'll never really be able to properly understand what their influence was in comparison to Wu Tang or Bone Thugs, where I was actually listening to the music. Or even now, it's like I've been watching Migos' career as an adult, where I actually really understand what's going on in the music mm -hmm. business. That's an even entirely different thing. It's like <laughs> it, it becomes very hard to, and I don't think that there's any value in being a current rapper having that kind of conversation about how you compare to Tupac, how you compare to Biggie. It's just there's yeah. no value in you even trying to have that conversation because nobody wants to hear it. Yeah, man, I just feel like, you know, why can't everybody just be great mm. within themselves? You know what I'm saying? You know, if you if you were blessed to get the attentions of the masses, then just be happy with that. Just be great. Just keep doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole thing. Everybody got to look at the next person and be like, oh, no. 
it's always like a competition. I understand competition can be good. Hey, there, there's there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't go about everything like, oh, we got to be known as the best. We got to be. I know I'm one of the coldest MCs, and and, and niggas can't see me on the microphone if they try. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I know that. You know what I'm saying? So, but so I don't. But I don't have to run around and yell it and scream it. I go in the studio and I put it down on the song and I let them know. Like I'm not just a rapper. I'm an artist. Mm. What got you pissed off enough that you wanted to actually do the just track at the Migos and Twenty One? Bro, that's the whole thing. That track was recorded way before that whole thing with Lazy Bone jumped off. Whoever went out there and made that album cover with me holding it, I had nothing to do with that. Bro. Oh, okay. Because I, I was had, thinking, yeah. I'm like, that's a little extreme. That's, know, a, that's bro, a lot. Bro, I had nothing to do with that. That, that. that song I made was way before that beef even jumped off. You know what I'm saying? And I wasn't like, I was talking about Dudes wearing dresses in the song. I ain't never seen the Migos with a dress on. Oh, so it was just a different sort of overall fuck new school bullshit yeah, yeah. type song. Not fuck the new school. You know what I'm saying? I was just saying, you know what I'm saying? Like, just wasn't, wasn't, so, much, wasn't so much riding with the agenda. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Of like, just basically saying, you know, like, that ain't where we come from. We real dudes. Out here. We real men. You know what I'm saying? That we're going to carry ourselves like real men, bottom line. Has it been weird for you to watch hip-hop change so much and to have so many of the established values that you came in the game with, whether it's musical, whether it's street stuff, respect stuff, so much of that has eroded over the years. Is it hard for you to watch that and like you you stay roughly the same and everything around you in the hip-hop world changes so much? Man, <clears throat> not really, because, you know, you really can't expect everything to stay the same. The world changes. People change. Times change. Like, it's been, you're, I mean, we've been, we've been, we've been running for a long time, but it's going to eventually come a time where the people are going to be like, sit your old asses down. Right. You know what I'm saying? That time comes for everybody. Some sooner than others. Uh. You know what I'm saying? But it's like. Man, I sit back and I just watch the game for what it is. You know, I'm not mad at these cats for what they do because these dudes is doing the same thing we did. It's just like when we was coming up and we was doing our music and our parents were telling us, that ain't real music, but y'all doing. You know, what am I, man, y'all, oh, y'all tripping. It's, we're seeing the same thing right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But what the younger generation should understand, though, is like, we're not always trying to come at them. You know, like, oh, this is whack. You shouldn't do it like this. You know what I'm saying? We've been we've been going in the same direction with, with this hip hop thing, and the artists have always been getting the short end of the stick. Mm. But what 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 we're trying to say now is it, it's time to change. It's time to break that cycle. Mm. It's time to become bosses. You come in an artist, but you leave a boss. Right. That's the whole mentality everybody needs to have. You know what I'm saying? It's not necessarily you know, and just be a little bit more aware of what you're talking about, whose agenda you push, you know what I'm saying? Because like the people, you know, like the, the, the industry will use you up for their agenda and when they're done, they'll drop you off like you never existed. So, you know what I'm saying? You gotta be always, you gotta be always like <clears throat> alert and like watching out for you and yours for real. Right, yeah, see this is one thing I'm really interested to ask you about because you guys have the kind of catalog, like I talk to a lot of newer artists about streaming and how much money they make from streaming and blah, blah, blah. I mean, you guys have the kind of catalog where I'm sure you still stream like outlandish amounts. Oh yeah, all the time. You're on the radio, videos, whatever the fuck it is. Do you still make enough money from just like the streaming or the licensing type stuff? Are you totally chilling? Like you make enough in a year that you don't have to do shit because that money still comes in so good. I don't think I'm gonna never make that much money to where I don't have to do anything because I'm like, I'm not, it's hard to say because like people think I'm crazy, but I'm not, I'm not desperate in a haste trying to sacrifice everything just to make money. Mm. I'm happy with the revenue we got coming in. Like I said, we're blessed because a lot of people like they came out during, during our era and like, you know, it ain't that many left. The only person I see really doing it is like people like Snoop and Nas and them are still out there, you know what I'm saying? But it ain't that many that came from our era that's still able to to stand on their two legs. And there's so many people who, around the time that you guys were at your height, they were around that level, yeah, but yeah. they don't play, like you don't hear their songs anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because... because Shit ages differently. Yeah, because it's not, it's not even so much about like me making money. I love doing music. Mm. I love being an artist. I love creating stuff. I love like just like 
getting this music to people and relaying the message to people because that's more important than anything. And if I make money doing it, again, I'm blessed because I'm getting to do what I, what, I, what I always want to do and get paid for it. So it's like, man, I'm cool. I'm good. I'm not hungry. My belly ain't grumbling. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My kids is eating. They all good. You know what I'm saying? So it's a wonderful thing. How many kids you got? I got nine kids. Jeez, nine kids. How many moms? Four. Four moms. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, at least you're not future where his baby moms are all forming together, creating a coalition against him. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you on good terms with him? Oh, yeah. Mm. All of them. Yeah. All my kids and they all cool. So, yeah. What are the age ranges? Uh, 20, 23 to 12. Wow. Yep. Damn, so you've been a good guy for a while now. You've been holding out. Oh, yeah. You learned your lesson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Man, you, that, that was, you know what I'm saying? It was like, I mean, everybody wild when they're young, you know what I'm saying? But I don't regret none of my kids, man. I love them all. They, they all fun. You know, they all, they all very, very talented. They sing, they rap, they dance. They, they very talented. Is that stressful to not be able to be as involved as you might want to be in their lives? Oh, yeah. Just because there's so many of them, and yeah. you're obviously focused oh, yeah. on your career, doing your thing. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. It, it is it, it is stressful, but I make sure that I take time when I bring them all in. Mm. Bring them all. They all come down to the house. You know what I'm saying? They stay at the house, or you know, I go see them all the time. So it's like. Right. Yeah. It's just like having a like an army of friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's always down what you ride or die. Do you ever think about the fact that one day you're going to be 80, and because you have nine kids— it's like one of them has got to have a good job, and they're going to help you out no matter what. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, see, all nine of them better have a good job, cause, you know, because I want all mine back. <laughs> but you're safe because it's like if I if, – say I have one kid, and that – he just ends yeah. up fucking up. Yeah. You got yeah. nobody to rely on. But if you have nine, that's a pretty good bet that one yeah. of them is going to figure something out. That's true. That's true. So I just hope they're getting themselves together. Yeah. There you <laughs> go. <Sorry. laughs> you know? um, so do you feel like – is do you think that Migos and Twenty One and them think that there's animosity between you? Like, is that something that's even worth trying to sort of squash or settle or something? I mean, man. Uh, I mean, bro. Like, I think uh, they. Th- man, I don't know because I don't know what, what the whole situation. That was that was like pretty much lazy was doing that. You know what I'm saying okay. or whatnot. But um, from what I hear. He had some dialogue with, uh, I think, Twenty One Savage. I'm, if 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 I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but I think he had some kind of dialogue with him. You know what I'm saying? I never really got involved with it because the whole thing it came about. You know what I'm saying? I guess Lay had words with him or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I'm gonna stand behind my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like right. wrong or right, I'm standing behind him. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the camp, and I understand how he feels, and I understand why that ticked him off and it made him like right. Flip, because like I said, like a lot of things were building up. You know what I'm saying? He just felt like just overall, we we haven't gotten the respect that we should. Right? Yeah. Cause sometimes people just, you know, it's it's easy for people to fall back on the same when when you have the best groups conversation. It's just easy to not think about it that much and just sort of name off the first ones that come to mind. And Bone is kind of that that kind of group where maybe they're not the first one to come to mind, but then when you actually think about it and you actually compare the accolades and the the impact and everything, it's like, oh well, clearly they belong in this conversation about yeah. top groups. Man, but 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 I don't even really bl- blame like a lot of the artists because like when you're not you when you're when you're not informed. Or you don't like, I always tell people, like, just don't do music just because you want to do music. Like, if you really love love it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you should study music. Mm. You should learn music. You know, because it's a lot, it's, 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 it's a lot about music that can help you. Like, just don't get into it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you really should know. And I really don't blame the artists because nobody has really sat and taught them. When you look at athletes that go to school, when you look at athletes, when they, you know, athletes are... They're trained from an early age, from like junior high school. They, they go through the high school program. They go to college. So by the time they get to the uh, pros, they've had a lot of training. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, they, people have told them how how to be a professional. We don't have that in hip hop. People just get in and think they know what they're doing and don't want to hear nothing. Don't want to hear no advice or what people that went through similar si- situations as you how they fucked up and how they didn't fuck up. Mm. And in reality, it's like, you know, if you join the NBA, it's like the 
the coaches and the teams. There's this whole structure to humble you, to exactly. force you into a structure where you have to actually work and focus on your career and everything. And I'm sure there's plenty of guys who kind of fuck off. But for the most part, there's this structure. And it's the total opposite in rap music where the people who sign you, the label, it's really in their best interest to just give you whatever you want, treat you like a fucking giant grown oh, yeah. baby. And yeah. basically not, there's no incentive for them to really get you ready for life. Man, no. No, they, they just give you all this. They they give you all this money. That's why I say, like, <clears throat> we'd have fared much better. We'd have fared much better and went through less. I think less of the uh, things we went through had easy not passed away. Mm. Because that was our mentor. He we he was with us every day. Right. And I can tell you, he was going to be there telling us, like, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that with that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, and then, but when he passed away, we didn't have nothing. We was just, it's just some wild dudes with a whole bunch of money. You know right. what I'm saying? And we just like, we we took the money and we we tried to imitate as much as we could uh. what we saw him doing with Ruthless Records when we like came with Mo Thug Records and you know had the office and you know what I'm saying? We tried to emulate all that like for real. Do you think that Easy in a lot of ways wanted to right the wrongs from his own career? Like he had saw, he had saw what happened with NWA and how it didn't turn into what it could have, and he was looking at you guys really thinking like. I can be an industry guy. I can help them be great where maybe NWA wasn't as great as it could have been. Oh, yeah. Mm. He was definitely looking at, that, looking at it like that. And he was also looking at trying to get NWA back together, you know, because him and, him and Ice Cube was having conversations. Like he, I mean, we was around, like, when he was having some of the conversations. He used to tell us. He was, like, you know, trying to get this NWA thing back going together, you know what I'm saying? So he had, he had plans. Wow. He had plans, like, when he went in and got rid of, like, <laughs> Jerry Heller and you know what I'm saying like like because you know he told us like I'm about I'm about to like just switch everything up you know what I'm saying I, I found you know that that same another photo that they had in the movie where he found out right all his business wasn't right no lie like he had the same another photo and he told us he was like yo I'm about to make a serious move and I need y'all to just like just buckle down and ride with me because because he had had us out here in California and like you know he like Easy would like disappear for like weeks at a time. What was he doing? You think? Not working. Oh, he working around like doing him. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes he would just disappear like and get gone because I guess because of all the stress. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, but but in the meantime, we'd be in the hotels like with no money, like starving, and then you know he would he he'd come through and drop it off. You know what I'm saying? But then we got fed up. We like yo E, if we if 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 you need us to go back to Cleveland. While you deal with whatever you're dealing with, man, just let us know because at least we can hustle back at home. We, this is L.A. We don't know nothing about, you know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't trying to go out in these streets and do none of that. We don't know nothing about this mm. system out here. We can go home and hustle. And he was like, and that's when he showed us the photo and was like, nah, I need y'all to chill and just just buckle down. I'm, I'm, on, I'm making some big changes and y'all are part of it. Mm. So I was like, you know, so so we just fell back after that. And then, you know, um, a few weeks later, he disappeared like for, for like more than a couple of weeks. Do you think he was sick, and that was part of why he was disappearing? Ma no, man. Easy was always moving. Like he was always like doing, like always doing stuff. Right. I don't know. I don't know if he was or not, but you know, he was always moving. If he was, he was always moving still. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, like I said, like you know, like more than two weeks went past. Like, like four or five weeks went past that we hadn't talked to him or seen him. Uh huh. And, you know, we got a call up to Ruthless Records. You know, we got a call up to Ruthless Records, and um, they wouldn't tell us where he was. They was like, Easy's fine, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they they gave us our our first, uh, what were they, like royalty checks or advancement checks, I guess? Right. Yeah, they gave us our first checks. And uh, we after we got done, we packed up and moved back to Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. So yeah. you guys didn't really, Easy didn't really get to see much of your success. No, no, not at all. The only thing he saw was was the success of creeping on the come up. Right. So he wasn't even around for the second album. Okay, because I was so young that it's kind of it's yeah. weird for me to even think about this from that age. Because I remember ninety five was was it ninety five or ninety six when he passed? I think it was ninety. Ninety-five, I think. Right. Yeah. I remember being in yeah. school when I found out about it and being distraught and nobody else understanding the yeah. fact that I was really upset about this rapper in California dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah. It was crazy. 
That was crazy. Um, do you feel like because okay, I was I was just at the show over the weekend with a Snoop Game Exhibit, uh, Warren G. It was one of those like '90s sort of revival type mm-hmm. shows. It was called How the West Was Won. Um, do you guys end up doing a fair amount of those where they sort of bring together like groups from the '90s and shit? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. How is that? How is the vibe with like like that group that I just named? Have you ever man. booked on that kind of thing? Man, it's always a family vibe, man. You're like you get, everybody be outside their dressing rooms, just talking. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Smoky atmosphere. The, the back backstage area was yeah, it was mind blowing to me because I'm just like, dude, this is like the most G's I've ever been around in my life, and yeah. everybody's smiling, everybody's having yeah. a good time. Yeah, I mean, no matter what the past was, no matter if you had beef with this person, it's it's, it's Everybody's old, older and mature now, so it's, everybody's just thankful to still be here, be alive, and still doing what we do, for real. Yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful vibe in the air. Um, yeah, so that, that was one thing that struck me, though, is just that there, so many of those people have like stuff built into their performance where they still uh, talk about Easy and still remember him and stuff. Is that something... Oh, yeah that you think is particularly important to just like literally go out of your way to keep his name alive because he's not you know there's a certain amount of attention that Biggie and Pac are always going to get because they were such big stars and mm-hmm. Easy was more of a rapper's rapper in a lot of ways where he's like mm-hmm. more of like the hardcore fan favorite it's kind of yeah. easy for people to forget about him sometimes yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so I feel like it's even more important for people to like really keep his name alive oh yeah man definitely and that's why we do it you know that's why we always screaming his name out we always paying homage uh to him at every show mm. and we're gonna do that man till we till we ain't doing it no more you know because like he saved us he saved us from a lot of things you know he saved us from prison he saved us from the grave you know what i'm saying he he he, he saved us from ourselves mm. you know what i'm saying so uh, we owe everything to that man that's crazy Unbelievable. All right, can we talk about the Crossroads video just yes, a little indeed. bit? Who conceptualized that? Was that just an idea that they brought you? Because this is like, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, you should definitely go watch it. Which is amazing that it has 100 million YouTube views in 10 years, given that it's been out for like 20-something years. Yeah, yeah. That's man. amazing. Yeah, man. You know, um, man, that, man, I forget what the who came up with the concept, you know what I'm saying? But um, it was just... I know I was tripping off of it because they was talking about they were spending. That's when they were spending like them crazy budgets, mm-hmm. and I'm like, man, we spending what? And I'm like, man, we can put that in my pocket, son. Yeah, for real, <laughs> y'all tripping, right? But yeah, you know, it was. Um, and then when I look at it, to, when I look at it today, I'm like, man, it don't look like no six hundred dollar video. <laughs> like, <for laughs> yeah, real. I know, right? I like, don't know what y'all are talking you about. You could definitely make that video for twenty grand now. Exactly, <laughs> real talk. <laughs> yeah, man, but it was it was it was something different though. You know, the whole the whole song. The, the whole song in itself was just like something special because the original song that we did we didn't we we didn't we we just did it for our homies that passed away. Right, it was about a lot of your homies who passed, but not easy. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, but not, no, no. It was actually about one homie that passed away. Okay, because because at the time we had only lost like one homie back in the hood. Uh-huh. So um, so it was like that first homie that you lose. It's yeah. like such a big deal to you. Yeah, and you, and you're just yeah, saying you know, R.I.P. all the time because you're not used to this feeling yet. Yeah, he, yeah. And this dude was with us. Like he was he was actually like the uh, like the sixth member of Bone because like he was our transportation. He took us everywhere. He promoted like. Like he was in the group, you know what I'm saying. So like, like when we lost him, you know what I'm saying. It was, it was like it, it, it hit us hard. So like we did that song, and then after we got on with E, like you know we started like losing a lot of our other people. You know what I'm saying. My cousin was murdered. Uh, Wishbone Uncle Charles was murdered. Right. Uh, the homie from the hood, Boo, was murdered. You know what I'm saying. My brother-in-law Tombstone was killed, murdered, all shot in the head. It's crazy. You know what I'm saying. So it was um. It was just crazy. We was like, yo, man, like, every time we do something good, something bad always happened to us. Like, so we started thinking we was cursed. We were like, man, I don't know. Bone might be cursed. Right. <laughs> like, for real. But, you know what I'm saying? So, um, like, when we did the song and it blew up like that, man, it, it was just like, it was just crazy. Like, that everybody took to it? Because I guess everybody was, like, dealing with this. You, you, everybody deal with death, you know what I'm saying? So I guess that song just reached everybody. And still to this day, they're going to, they're going to feel the song because people are still dying. Right. You know what I'm saying? Can you tell me anything about Uncle Charles? Man, Uncle Charles was like the dude in, 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 in Wishbone's family. He, every talent show we did, he was there front row. Mm. And he was a clean dude. He'd be there with his, like, 
with his suit on. He drove a Jaguar. Mm. He'd be there with his with, with, with his with his suit on, with his trench coat, with his with his leather gloves on, in the front row, just like. <laughs> when you're a kid, a dude like that'll make an impression on you. Like, damn, yeah, yeah, he's just man. slick as hell. Yeah, how you yeah. how you live like that? That's yeah, crazy. Slick dude, he was a real clean cut dude for real. Wow. Yeah. There's something about the delivery on that bar that just made everybody in the whole world just all of a sudden remember Man, and think about of, it. Who the fuck is Uncle Charles? Yeah, yeah a lot of people got Uncle Charles. <laughs> well, that's true too, yeah. A lot of people got Uncle Charles. But just the delivery of the way he says that. And it's not it's not a line that on its own is yeah. anything that interesting compared to the rest of the song, but the delivery just made everybody just that's crazy. I mean, you crazy. know, because, you know, it was one he, he was real close to his uncle, you know what I'm saying? Mm, like, he so, felt that when he said yeah, it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So the way he delivered it, you know, that was, that was, that was real raw emotion right there. Mm. Real talk. Crazy. And then you guys almost won Music Video of the Year, but you were beat up by Coolio. Oh, yeah. When? When? I don't know. I forget what year it was, but I just saw that Coolio won. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't even know. That's weird because I feel like you, that song has aged better than uh, Gangster's Paradise, or or was it was it Fantastic Voyage? I can't even remember what Coolio song it was. Mm, yeah, now, Coolio had some hits though. He did, and yeah. you know I don't know if he's still doing it, but the last time I saw him, oh yeah, he is. He, well, but I mean he still has that haircut, but there's like not a lot of <laughs> hair to work with. He's got like three yeah. things yeah. going on up there. Yeah, that's yeah. rough. Yeah, he going out with them. Yeah, he was with ICP for a while too. I don't know if he still is. Also, why am I mentioning ICP twice in this interview? I don't know. Them the homies, man. <laughs> Shout out to them. They are actually cool as fuck. That, that's <laughs> another group that, like, people thought they were crazy. You yeah. actually meet up with them. They're just super nice, chill guys. Man, man, we went on several tours with them dudes. And they fans is crazy. Yeah, that's a fact. For real. I seen people. That, I went to their show in downtown LA. I did not know that there was people who looked or acted anything like that anywhere oh. near LA. Oh, yeah. They, man, they, yeah. Mind blowing. People might not know this, but do you actually? What's in your cup? This is the uh, this is uh, THC syrup. What's the name of it? The Ben Baller THC syrup. BBS. Yeah. Right. Shout out Ben Baller. I'm still going to Ben Baller podcast soon. Yes, indeed. You like that stuff? I don't know yeah. that many people that drink it. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I always see it. They always they they can't handle it. It's too strong for them. <laughs> That's true. You get high as fuck. I've tried that yeah. shit before. And that shit gets you fuck. I had to make the <laughs> homie drive home one time because I drank yeah. some of that shit. Yeah, man. I'm used to it now, though, so, you know. Right. Yeah. So you still have a strong love affair with cannabis, or what are your thoughts on that? Man, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I love to smoke, but I can't, you know what I'm saying, because because of the situation I have in my lungs. So, oh, okay. Yeah, you know, I, I really can't, so that's why I transitioned over to the uh, edibles and the and the drink, and they used to tear me up at first. Really? Like, man, I'm talking about because I used to eat. The first time I ate an edible, man, like a real edible, I sat down and, Ate a cheesecake and I ate the whole damn thing. Uh-huh. I sat down cut it with like a glass of milk. Like I'm just like like I'm eating regular. You know what I'm saying? Twenty minutes later, you feel like you're Bro, gonna die. <laughs> I'm talking about yo. I've never been had a had a marijuana high to where I couldn't sleep, bro. Oh, you couldn't even sleep, bro. I couldn't even sleep. I'm in here like yo. This is torture. <laughs> like, I never had one that I couldn't <laughs> sleep off, but I definitely had at least one or two where I slept for like 14 hours off that shit. Yeah. Yeah, bro. It's torture. Then everything in the fridge I ate. Really? Oh, Everything. yeah. Definitely. That'll happen. No lie. For real. <laughs> That's for like real. a real drug when you have the fucking weed syrup or, oh, or, yeah. the, or the edibles and you just take too much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I learned how to balance it out now, so I'm good. That's so, man, that's fucking good. I feel like I, I, you're actually making me triggered enough that I think I have some of the weed syrup in my closet at home, so I might have to get involved with that. Oh, yeah. I got some real lean, too, but I'm scared. Oh, no, I never mess with that devil. You like that? No, no, no. I don't blame you. It's, it's the devil's juice. Yeah. But I, I, somebody gave me something. I got it in my house. And it's just every time I think about it, I just remember. I'm like, you're going to feel real groggy. And then you're going to sleep for a really long time. And then you're not going to feel that great in the morning. So yeah. <clears throat> is it worth it? Not to me. <laughs> I hear you. What do you got uh, coming out? Anything you should keep an eye out for? Well, man, I, um, I just released a, uh, an album called The Quick Fix Level 2. Music's the medicine. It's available right now on iTunes, Spotify, all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm working on a few more solo projects. I'm working on a project called Crazy Melodies. I'm actually getting ready to release Thug Mentalities on iTunes because it's never been on iTunes. Oh, Fan, wow. the, the, man, fans have been asking me about that. And, and, and when I release that, I'm releasing a bonus CD of songs that didn't make the Thug Mentality album. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like 12, 12 songs that didn't make it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm working on that. Um, working on a 
working on several things with the group right now, you know what I'm saying? And I have and, and, and I'm pushing a lot of artists. I'm I'm developing artists right now for my label, The Life Entertainment. That's <clears throat> what's up. Working with an artist named Kane. This like really bubbling right now, you know, he 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 got a lot of traction. Okay. From Cleveland. Uh a cat named Position, you know what I'm saying? Get addicted to Mafia. It's a it's a, it's a group with a husband and wife. Uh-huh. Duet, you know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. And uh, my, uh another homie from Cleveland, Nova the Rebel, you know what I'm saying? So man, just 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 making traction with these dudes and just trying to get get more behind the scenes of the artists, man. Like trying to get some artists out here with some sus- substance because it's young it's young artists out here just not following the same path everybody else is. You don't have to make the same music that everybody else is making to be successful, trust me. Yeah, be be the change you want to see in the world. You be you be surprised when you come different how many people follow you. Mm, that's truth. And True. really if you want to make an impression, that's the only option. Exactly. If you come out sounding like, you know, you you could sound like a, a, a an all right Lil Wayne. Yeah. It don't people exactly. would probably still rather listen to the real Lil Wayne. Exactly. But if I you would. are an authentically weird and different you, then Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I bought you a little package too, man. With the, oh shit! The bag, the album, and everything is in oh, there. Oh, like, nice! I love merch. Bone hats and hell yeah, this yes is sick, indeed. dude. Yes, indeed. I'm excited. Damn, we're gonna get, get the you whole, together. Woohoo! The bone hats. This is lit. Yes, That's indeed. fucking fire merch right there. Hell yeah! Yes, Appreciate sir. it, man. Thank you so much. Oh, good, bro. Honestly, it was an honor uh, getting to talk to you. Man, same here, man. I, Appreciate it. I saw I, I saw this. Uh, podcast one time man and, and um i definitely heard about it when you tell me like hell yeah i want to do this man let's do it for sure that's dope honestly that's like the biggest th- thing that i could ever imagine getting from this is just to get to have conversations with so many people that i grew up looking up to you know man i hear you appreciate that yes indeed bro and also fun tidbit that i learned while getting ready for this interview is that uh because i always had heard that method man was the only person who did a song with tupac and biggie and then during this, I found out that, in fact, Bone Thugs did a song with Tupac, Biggie, and Easy e which mm-hmm. is even more of a bizarre accomplishment. Yes, it is, man. It's a blessing to get to work with those 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 three legends, man. Iconic legends, you know what I'm saying? They was all responsible for something, you know what I'm saying, in hip-hop. So it's a blessing. Crazy. R.I.P. to uh, all of the fallen soldiers. Yes, indeed. Both from the older generations as well as everybody we lost over the past couple of years. I appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you so much, man, all for coming on. Bro. Yes, indeed. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes. Like, comment, and subscribe. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Shout out to our sponsor, Eagle Energy.